Still here at the Trelawney Multipurpose Stadium in Jamaica, of course, on the north coast of this beautiful island. We're getting ready for the second of this doubleheader in Zone D of the Costa Cup. William Nib, who were leaders coming into this day, this match day, but now they are second on the table. Can they get back on top? Well, they'll have to get past Cedric Titus first and our commentary team who are going to take us through this encounter. The two teams are behind me waiting to get onto the pitch. Dean Smith and Jay Williams, they'll have the action for you. Here's the standards in Zone D of the Da Costa Cup as it stands. Pot Valley with uh, 12 points. With a game in hand over William Nib and Cedric Titus, nine and six points respectively. Discover Bay, three points. Machette and Holland rooted at the bottom of the table without a win. And yeah, it's been a struggle for them. But we're getting ready for the Trelawney Derby. And this Derby has really brought life to football in the parish of Trelawney. Let's look at it from 2018. Cedric Titus getting the double over them. 2019, uh, a draw and a win for William Nib. 2022, William Nib able to get the 6 0 over Cedric Titus. But last season, 2023, they did the double, did Cedric Titus over William Nib. But they now march on this venue, a venue built for cricket. But so versatile is it that it really can host football at the highest level. A great field, a great venue, a great matchup. One of interesting significance in Zone D of the Da Costa Cup. William Nib, they would have made it quite far last year in the Da Costa Cup, even though they uh, struggled. But we pause for the national anthem of Jamaica. Yeah, we're getting ready for this one as uh, the two teams will now meet each other. Cedric Titus in a blue with uh, yellow trimmings and white streaks as well. William Nib in uh, the traditional green and uh, purple, green shorts, purple top with uh, green trimmings on uh, the shoulders of their jersey as well. Venerable Hilton, the man with the whistle, Nicholas Anderson, the assistant, and Kemoy Reed, the second assistant, Paul Campbell, the fourth official for this one, Nicholas Anderson, FIFA referee. That's William Nib. As they get ready for their team photo, we get ready to give you the team sheet. In goal, they have Kamoy Phillips. They have a back four of Denton, of Marquez Forrester, Orville Brown, Jaquan James, and Richardinho Wilson. Three in the middle of the park, Jaheim Brown, Joshua Walker, Karen Henriquez, and up top, Saren Williams, Khalil Campbell, and Prince Bernard, their head coach, Dwight Jeremiah. So 
Cedric Titus will give their team feed in a short while, but the coin toss. Fenroy Hilton in charge of this one. Orville Brown, the captain for William Nibb. And he shakes hand with the captain of Cedric Titus, Teron Eccleston. He was a part of the team last year. Teron Eccleston. Here's their lineup. Anthony Gaynor in goal. A back four of Denton Livingston, Ashawin Mintum, Mikkel McCoy, and Junie Thomas. Three in the middle of the park, Rashad Henry, Owen Thorpe, and at the captain, Teron Eccleston. And three up top, Jose Blagrove, Dwayne Mitchell, and Deshaun Watson. Wade Crawford is the returning head coach as well. This derby has uh, so many stories. Cedric Titus in recent history certainly has had the better of William Nibb. But incidentally, William Nibb tend to go a bit further in the competition beyond the group stage. Let's see how they match up here as the action gets off. Dean Smith, my name, Lejay Williams, with me in the commentary booth. Lejay, your initial thoughts of this encounter? Yeah, I think this is going to be a, a pretty tasty game. It's been feisty over the past couple of seasons, especially last season, a lot of controversy surrounding this fixture. I think both these teams have something to prove in terms of supremacy, not only over this group, but also over the parish as well in terms of high school football. Moving the ball well is Cedric Titus. All the way back to Minto. Another returning member of the team from last year. Did make it to the second round of the competition. I remember doing a game at Draxall with them. Sends that one forward. Easily handled by Kamoy Phillips in goal for William Nib. Here they now try to build their own attack. Poor first touch from Karen Henriquez, but they still have possession. William Nib. Whistle on that play as Chardinio Wilson brought down. Yeah, about as blatant as free kicks come that one. Cedric Titus have started the game well, but William Nibu with a good opportunity here to whip across in. Shaheem Brown, the man with the responsibilities. He goes directly to goal. A bit of unsure goalkeeping at the onset, but eventually it was held. Wonderful such a play as William Nip trying to dictate the tempo and the flow of this one. Gave it away though, and Thorpe tries to stream forward. Quite a unit, Thorpe, isn't he? That's the head coach of William Nip, Dwight Jeremiah. Also an analyst here at Sports Max.
William Nip trying to make something happen. On the far side, still in possession, they go from distance. And Anthony Gaynor forced to make the first save of the encounter. As I said, the Titus player is down. And that strike from distance garnering some amount of applause from the spectators here at the Trelawney Multipurpose Complex. Yeah, they tested out his hands on the free kick, so they decided to give it another test. He was much sure on that occasion. Crawford has, I beg your pardon, Gainer. As his coach looks on, Wade Crawford. There he is again. He's calmly in his seat while Dwight Jeremiah. I doubt we'll see him in one <laughs> for this encounter. He sometimes, he sometimes, he sometimes stands for commentary as well. Cedric Titus in possession, trying to turn here. Dustin doing some good work. Gets it across. Come on, Phillips, equal to the task. Sends it out now. Good defensive work from the number eight. Joshua Walker. Deshaun Watson was showing a bit of too much of the ball, giving Walker enough time to recover. It's a throw in for William Nib. That's the funny thing about a derby, Lejay, that even a team that would have lost the Spot Valley, Cedric Titus, this season, certainly in the opening six minutes, we haven't seen anything that would have suggested such a result would have been possible. Yeah, but several factors could have come into play in that contest as well. That's true. And Spot Valley at the end of the day are undefeated in this group have won all of their games, sit atop the group as well. So both of these teams, William Nib, Nib and Cedric Titus playing catch-up. Any win by William Nib will see them return to top of the group. And Cedric Titus, they need a win to stay right in the mix of things. Here's Eccleston. Does well. Phillips had to be alert. William Nib looking very smooth. Flag stayed down. It goes up now. Assistant waited till the very last second to raise that flag there. Throwing taken by Cedric Titus. Henriquez. The referee there being put down. Got him. Sprightly. Poor touch by the number 15 on that occasion for William Neal, Jaquan James. Here's Cedric Titus now, really been enthralling the opening encounter here, the opening minutes of this encounter. Yeah, certain intensity to it, tempo as well. Another look at the referee, did well to get up first time. Brown. 
good first touch. And here they come now. Turning it backwards. Here's another opportunity to shoot from Brown. Tame in the end and wayward. Seemed a bit hesitant to get the shot off initially. And after a while just couldn't believe the space he had so decided to do it anyway. But as I said, Dean, pretty tame effort. Pretty ambitious pass there attempted by Joshua Walker. Here's Mitchell trying to make something happen for Cedric Titus. Unable to push the narrative. Tried to throw that through to Watson, but it was cut out well. Here's Henriquez. That's a lovely attempted ball, you know. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. Walters was barging in rather forcefully. Into the party he fouled. Free kick taken. Good take by Ackerston. Walters able to play it out. Ball released. Too much on it. Certainly not shy of about getting forward. Richardinho Wilson. Cedric Titus player needing some attention. I think it's their captain, Taran Eccleston. to his feet, Eccleston I have to go to the sideline just for the formalities as directed by the referee play will resume with this throw in for Cedric Titus this in the 13th minute of this action, of course, lots of DaCosta Cup action all across the island of Jamaica Manning Cup action as well Early update from that encounter in the Manning Cup between Kingston College and Campion. Casey leading 1 0. Totally unaffiliated to the commentary pair here. Plenty of time left in that contest, I can assume. Lots of time. For a comeback or absolutely equalize anything of that nature. I, I I stand with you. Walters tries to release. 
So Wilson Kelly. again. But too heavy yet again. Seemingly has a lot of space down that flank, Wilson. McCoy. Another foul there in the midfield area. Saran Williams, the guilty party. Good movement from Watson there, but recovered. Ball played out as Denton Livingston was waiting to towel down the left and side of the Cedric Titus attack. It's a throw in for William Nib. Taken short. To Orville Brown, the captain. Here they come. Looks to be Henriquez gets it across. The header goes. Cedric Titus able to come away with the ball though. Walters with a firm challenge gets the ball. Has Wilson behind him, gets it across. Saren Williams guy with the and Henriquez couldn't find the finish, gets another chance, that two block, scooped away by Cedric Titus. William Nib, they are smelling blood here, still in possession. They're moving the ball well, William Nib. Good play again. Thorpe dispossessed. And then falls. Really good sequence from William Nib. First one coming in, not cleared well. Williams not taking the shot on first time as I think he should have. And a couple of bites at the cherry for Curran Henriquez. But in the end, they've got a free kick here that Jaheim Brown will be standing over. What can he do from just outside the 18 yard box? Jaheim Brown. Walters to his right. Three man wall. Brown goes high and over the top. Minter trying to stream forward. Count the press of William Nib has really been effective. They've been able to win the ball very high and they counter press well. Up on losing the ball as well. Great ball movement again. Oh, good movement. So calm there. Gave it away. Though Walters held. And recovers well. Richardine Wilson 
gets around him. Oh yes, it's coming alive now. Good switch of play. Yeah, William Nib really getting into their stride in this game. Good skill from Richardinho. You can probably see why he was gifted that name. It was prophetic, wasn't it? Walters doing well. Here's Brown. James there giving it away and Cedric Titus trying to do something with the scraps, but they win a throw in. Haven't really been alive in this one. Here's a great opportunity. Too much on that one. And Khalil Campbell can't get there. Come on, Phillips. Excellent triangulation from the William Nip team. Always a free man. Watson under pressure loses it. Here's Henriquez. He loses it as well. Asho in Minto. Does the recovery work for Cedric Titus. Yeah, most, of, most of the time, pressing isn't necessarily to force an on-ball mistake. It's to force the opponents into mistake when they're passing out and that was perfect execution from William Nib. as they go forward yet again the shot is on but it's a weak one Forrester with that attempt certainly hasn't been shy to express himself from center back Forrester Walters gets it to Henriquez, gives it back. The wall pass. James can't keep it in. Early shot. Showed Wade Crawford, the coach, calm as you like, but he has his assistants to do the on-field or the sideline backing on his behalf. Blade Grove trying to get by one, gets the throw in. Good work from William Nib again in the press. Cedric Titus just had, hasn't been able to keep up with it. Overestimated his pace there, Saron Williams. But after a bright start from Cedric Titus, William Nib has been the dominating force in this game for the past 15 minutes or so.
good work from Walters again. He's really been solid in the middle of the park. Walters again. Players like himself cause you to see why an analyst like LeJ Williams always favors a number six as a man of the match. Here's Eccleston. Had to be brought down. He was really through. On goal there and Marcus Forster, you reckon, took that one for the team. Yeah, I think he was in such of a bind. In such a bind, I don't think he had a choice but to take one for the team. He was some really good skill from Eccleston. You thought the long legs would have helped out Forrester, but it was excellent deception, and he certainly would have been through on goal had he had continued that run. And he stepped up, brushed himself off, and this free kick is all his. It is a pretty tall William Nib wall. William Nib, who have not conceded a goal so far into the Costa Cup this season, will it change now? Eccleston waiting on the wings. Gets the whistle, goes for goal. Just over the top. Come on, Phillips was at full stretch just to ensure that that perfect sheet of his remains intact. Yeah, it was a pretty decent attempt. Just dipping a bit too late. Was pretty central, but on Cedric Titus's first shot of the game, they certainly had Kamoy Phillips interested. Here's it come, ball whipped across. Anthony Gaynor in goal for Cedric Titus, held on well to it. Well, Walters, he's really been good. Henriquez turns it back, gets by one, gets it to Walters who goes from outside the area just wide. Yeah, one of the few off-color moments he's had so far in this game, Walters. Here's Cedric Titus, gets it through to Eccleston, Eccleston wide! Oh wow! How close was that from Eccleston? He has been the shining light in this Cedric Titus attack so far in this game and here he was again popping up. Left-footed effort just, just dragged that one wide. Millimeters from the post. Yeah. And William Nib, who have been in control of this game, via two Eccleston strikes, have been reminded there is still a lot to play for in this one. Here's Orville Brown for. William Nib. 
Walker. Joshua Walker. Well read by Walker. Cedric Titus trying to build something there. Keeper has to come. Walker. Intercepted well by McCoy, but still with William Nib. Here's a shot. Charged down by Mikkel McCoy. Still alive for William Nib. Oh, that was a lovely turn, but it just got away from him. Cleared by Cedric Titus. It's a throw in now for William Nib. Another card shown to William Nib player. Yeah, that something must have happened off ball for Saran Williams to pick up a card. Enriquez, again a gum that one up, and now spreads it out, Eccleston the target, good control as well, under pressure though, there again the press of William Nib doing the magic, Enriquez, still Enriquez, The outlet there and the former Jacob James was offside. Slip there. Can William Nib make them pays? Williams trying to press the narrative still. Still on the ball is Williams. Intercepted by Mikkel McCoy. It's a throw in now for William Nib. Walker goes for the shot. Yeah, that one wayward as well. That's the only aspect of play, I think, from William Nib. 
that has been left wanting a bit. They're finishing and shooting generally. Don't think it has been the best. Seven shots for the William Nib team so far. Yet to turn any of those into goals as one of their players, Saron Williams, receives some treatment. Shot of one section of the grandstand. Perhaps a more populated area in the grandstand we see now on screen. Good support for this encounter. And it's a first for schoolboy football to be in this venue in the parish of Trelawney. Here's William Nib. Campbell tries to get it to Henrique as he turns, gets it through to Walker. He rolled it in. And William Nib is rolling. Rock and roll. He goes to the opposite bench. There is a statement in that. Yeah, there has to be. But how fitting, how fitting was it? Joshua Walker popping up. He has been everywhere on this pitch, covered almost every blade of grass. And there he is, arriving late. Lovely pass from Henriquez as well. Reverse with the outside of the right boot, right into his path. And a calm, calm finish from the Roman midfielder. And he said the celebration gave a bit of intent, had a bit of purpose behind it. So too has this William Nib team on the pitch as well. Certainly. They have looked like a unit firing on all cylinders. Have had this game under control, you could say. Of course, the brilliance, the individual brilliance of Eccleston has caused some problems. And that pass emblematic of that putting Wilson under some form of pressure as Livingston was barging towards goal corner kick goes to Cedric Titus the first of the game but the pass from Henriquez to play through Walker and you can see the youthfulness of Karen Henriquez would love to find out his age here's the delivery Phillips came and he took it well. Here's Walker. Forrester can't be as forceful in defense as I'm sure he would have wanted to be on a yellow card. Here's Henriquez. Gets it to Brown. Henriquez goes first time. Kane was there.
Here's Walker. Sends that one forward. Campbell wasn't as alert to get the return ball as he should have been. Walker once more. Very few times that the Man of the Match Award has been sewn up this early in the game. Here's Wilson. Assuming Cedric Titus and Eccleston don't turn it up even more than they have so far in this contest, of course. But that's so imperious Joshua Walker has been so far in this game. Henriquez is he's silky smooth on the ball as well. Forrester to the captain, Orville Brown. Good take from Williams. Too much on that one. Take one, James. Unable to get that one. It's been a good 41 minutes of action so far, Lejay. And it's at a great venue as well. Certainly would love to be back here for schoolboy football and other levels of football as well. QPFJL. Wilson sends it across. James was trying to get the header on, but Cedric Titus now trying to break. Walk again, as he has been ubiquitous. Throw and take in. Campbell goes back to Forrester. Fresh out Henry. All the way back to Minto. Minto tries to spray it forward. Come on, Phillips looks very confident in goal, unbothered. So much space for William Nib now. Here's Brown. Walker. Back to Brown. Minter to Livingston. Livingston. Livingston did well on that occasion. Kamoy Phillips making sure of that one. Struck of half time now. Deserved lead, I have to say, by William Nid. Can't they double the lead? Ball sent forward. Willing runners. They get it across. Not handled. It. Oh my, how did he miss that? Prince Bernard. Not Kingly in the finish. For this thing from actually seemed like a very simple one to tap home for 2 0. 
but the simple part evaded him. Not dealt with well at all from Anthony Gaynor. Went for the more difficult finish there, I think. I think any meaningful, strong contact, and that's bulging the net. Gaynor was at his mercy, really. Yep. And ended up going for an, a bit of a lob. Here, Cedric Titus, can they spark something here? Good work from Brown to dispossess. Wilson, Silky. Rashad Henry will go into the referee's book as well. Here's another look at it. Two minutes at a time at the end of this first half as Richardinho Wilson received some treatment after that heavy tackle. Rashad Henry, the Cedric Titus player going into the book. one nil here, William Nib versus Cedric Titus in the Trelawney Derby. Perhaps the Linstead Derby, if it could be termed as such. McGraw won ahead of Dintil. Devon Davis. Surprise, surprise. Huge surprise. Let's see if Dintil can turn that one around or... It will be as is at the end. Eccleston for Cedric Titus. Been marked closely. Thorpe now. William Nib on the ball. Good work. Looks to be Williams. It is Williams. That's the first half. Solid performance from William Nib. They've really exercised their own dominance and control over their proceedings. And it has been the engine of the team that separates them. Joshua Walker rolled it past Anthony Gaynor and a deserved lead going into the halftime break. Cedric Titus, they have their moments as well, especially through the number 10, the captain, Eccleston. He showed a big on a few occasions, whipping one wide and winning a very dangerous free kick. But it's Dwight Jeremiah's men, or boys if you prefer, at the half with the lead. Jack Ostakabapshan from Group D, William Nib 1, Cedric Titus nil. La Liga lives on the home of champions, Getafe versus Leganes, Sunday, 7 a.m., 8 in the Eastern Caribbean. Followed by Athletic Bilbao versus Celta Vigo, 9.15, 10.15 in the Eastern Caribbean. Villarreal versus Barcelona, 11.30, 12 in the Eastern Caribbean. All these matches on Sportsmax 2. And we wrap up the action on Sunday with Raya Vallecano versus El Atleti. Sunday, 2 p.m. 3 in the Eastern Caribbean. JPL on Sports Max Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Cavalier versus Portmore United.
Ready now for second half action. William Nib versus Cedric Titus. William Nib, they lead by the odd goal. Beautiful shot that as we saw the mountain in the foreground, in the background rather. Of course, at the grandstand, you can even see the Lucy here, the Falmouth fear, I beg your pardon. Change made by Cedric Titus will give you the confirmation in a short while. Leje, you saw the first half. If you were in Cedric Titus's dressing room, what would you have told them? I think it's a sticky one. Really sticky. I think they're matching William Nib in terms of the intensity. I just think maybe they need to get more bodies around Eccleston, who has provided a constant threat for them. And I think this man here, Thorpe, in the middle of the park, needs to get more touches. Not touches like that, mind you, but I think he needs to be more involved. Clearly has a good passing range. Clearly can provide those passes from deep. Here they come, William Nib. And they also need to track that man, Richardino Wilson, who has been parading freely down that right-hand side for William Nib. Confirmation of a change for Cedric Titus. Kimani Eccleston coming in for Dwayne Mitchell. So I guess we have to specify <laughs> which episode we're referring to now. William Nib with a corner to start the second half. Their first of the contest, I believe. Wilson. Here's Walker. Brown. Make that Forrester. He's bit more advanced. Nashua Minto ensuring that that one was cleared. Wilson to Forrester. A challenge from Forrester who needs to be careful. Already on a yellow card. Probably his last chance that at a foul. Kimani Eccleston and Karen Eccleston were there. The shot ended up being way off target. Marvel Brown very calm on the ball. Enriquez though too much on that one. Prince Bernard getting the thick of things on that occasion here. Cedric Titus trying to push it forward. to be a free kick in a pretty promising area for William Nib. After a foul on Saron Williams who has been in the thick of the action in this game.
Anthony Gaynor there trying to get the wall to his liking all of three players for William Nib waiting in the wings Brown is there so is Campbell Walker now leaves on the two Jaheim Brown looks to be the one to strike he goes for goal Cedric Titus being tormented at the Trelawney multi-purpose complex. The derby is one-sided. Jaheim Brown with a lightning bolt. What a shot that was ferocious. Anthony Gaynor almost no chance. He's in sorrow. Such disappointment in his face, but what can you do with a strike of that quality? And it's so fitting. The school of sprint legend, Usain Bolt, that players from that school can provide moments of electricity like that. William Nib 2 nil up in this contest. What a strike that was. William Nib very much on their way. How does Cedric Titus recover? Can they recover? Here's William Nib once more. Forrester. I'd love to find out the, the rationale behind the celebrations in front of the Cedric Titus a bench. I'm sure there's a, a lot of talk that has gone on pre-season and in prior years as well. And even in the most hottest of derbies, that isn't normally the route that the celebrating team go after but yeah certainly that's a a question for the post game part of the production slight drizzle here at the Shiloh multi-purpose complex play continues William Nib haven't put a, a wrong foot forward here's Walker Dispossessed, but there again, Henriquez, he too dispossessed, but illegally says the referee, and it's another free kick. More central this time, Jay. I wouldn't argue against Zaheem Brown. Yeah, pretty brave of Cedric Titus to commit a foul in this area, seeing what just happened. Can lightning strike the same place twice? The electrician tap in here. He'd say no. Perhaps Raheem Brown will say otherwise. That was a good strike, you know, took a deflection. So call a kick.
Here's a corner kick from William Nib. Headed away. Poor challenge that from Joshua Walker. Forrester. Brown there unable to control. They regain possession though. James sends it to Prince Bernard. Can he whip it across? Has to turn it back. Left the player down. Still in the area. Here's James now. Cedric Titus finally able to clear. Didn't look good that injury. Off ball. Maybe got his foot stuck in the turf a bit. Here it is again. Yeah. Completely off ball. Always a worrying sight that. Yeah. Rashad Henry, who himself was shown a yellow card in the first half. Able to get up and stand by himself. Still showing signs of discomfort, but perhaps he'll be able to continue. Not seeing any player from the Cedric Titus bench warming up, so the physio there may have said, yeah, he's fine. Still a corner kick for William Nib. 50th minute of play. Here's the delivery. Not a corner kick. Here's the delivery once more. Still alive for William Nib. Player down for Cedric Titus. More results coming in from other games in the DeCosta Cup and Manning Cup. At halftime, it was nil all between St. Catherine High and St. George's College. Garvey Maceo leading two goals to nil over Old Harbour in the second half as well. Here's a look at the first goal for William Nib in this encounter. Enriquez with a beautiful assist and a calm finish from Joshua Walker. And look at that strike from Shaheen Brown, the number seven. Yeah, strike worthy of a venue like this. The Jamaican flag emblazoned on the paint in the seats.
Throwing for Cedric Titus. Foul throw. Mikael McCoy there. Lifting his feet on the ground. Taking the throw. Regains it for Cedric Titus. Here's Eccleston. Immediately surrounded by three players. Good defensive work again from William Nib. Here they come forward now. Enriquez. I think he would have been better served carrying for a bit there, Enriquez. Nicholas Anderson there getting a bit of calm to the proceedings. Prince Bernard. Enriquez. 16-year-old doing well. Unable to get it to Heel Campbell, the number 16. Two number nines getting a talk into from the referee. Owen Thorpe and Saron Williams. Good work from Brown there. Shaheen Brown, here's Orville Brown, the captain. Good movement. Prince Bernard gets it to James. Can he keep it alive? He does. Out muscle though, but it still falls. Well for William Nib. James gets it across. Good block from Minto. Here's Walker. Man of the match elect from the first half. Hasn't quite had such a wide range of influence in the second. Sitting much more. Allowing Jaheim Brown to more impact proceedings. But in his minimal touches, you can still see his quality. Jaheim Brown. Bernard. Cuts inside. Cut the shot off, but it was charged down by... Mitchell, here's a shot from James, and it was handled by Gaynor. Decent turnout here at the Filoni Multipurpose Complex. It still baffles me that this is the first schoolboy football game at this venue. Just about three years from now, it would have been a 20-year-old venue. Absolutely unbelievable. But it is happening here in 2024. Hopefully there's much more. Cedric Titus on the ball. This in the 65th minute.
Bonk giving away in a dangerous year. Blake Grove was waiting the by and by, but William Nib trying to clear. Bernard couldn't keep it in. Not seen too many William Nib subs warming up. Just one. Pretty young squad they've brought to this game. Over a average age of 14 and a half. Wow. That's impressive. Bernard. Could have been a foul was in fact given. Not sure the referee himself saw it. Here's Walker now. Trying to stamp his class further. Brought down. And that's going to be another yellow card. Reminds me a lot in his profile and play style of Yaya Toure. Powerful runner. Great engine on him as well. Good passing range. But also a lot of composure in his play. Lovely to see Joshua Walker as a talent in this game so far. Yeah. Here's a great chance. Enriquez with the back heel. Walker still has it alive. Laid on the plateau. Oh, yes. That's the captain, Orville Brown. Or was it Saron Williams? It was Saron Williams. He goes to the gallery. 3 0 for William Neighbor. And they're turning on the styles here. They avoid the Cedric Titus bench this time. He's relieved. Yeah, lovely finish to that. He has been threatening pretty much all game long as well, Sir and Williams. He broke to Joshua Walker at the top of the box. We thought he was going to take the shot. Broke to him here. Got the space, but it was Sir and Williams was waiting, lurking, and placing that ball into a spot where it couldn't be reached by Gaynor. And speaking of not being able to reach, I'm pretty much sure this game is out of reach for Cedric Titus now. William Nib. They're trying to make a statement here as well they should. Yeah, back to the top of Zone D in the Dakasa Cup very impressively. This is now their fourth game, and with call it 25 minutes if we're including stoppages, haven't conceded a goal yet. 12 goals scored. They usually have a good defense, they usually have a good attack, but this season they're looking quite imperious. Yeah. A free kick for Cedric Titus. Phillips was happy to see that one go over the top. Hitting the advertisers' billboards. Three shots they've made. None of them on target. Cedric Titus. Ball sent through for Coran Enriquez. 
can he work some magic? Gets it in a dangerous area. First time attempt that from Campbell. Didn't get the angles that he would have needed. Forrester listed in the area. Headed away by Henry. Here's Blake Grove under pressure though. Oh, they've been really effective in the counter press. Here's James for William Nib. Bernard. There's a youthful look about him as well. You made reference of the average age of the team. I'd be surprised if Bernard was beyond 16. Change being made by Cedric Titus. Rashad Henry, who was in some form of discomfort earlier, he'll exit. Saron Williams needing some treatment now. Looks as if he's in quite some pain, actually. Well, it's always good to visit before you make a conclusion. Unconfirmed reports have labeled this place as totally derelict, but that has been rubbished by my visit. And as you see, certainly the venue is worthy of any type of sporting competition. Track and field certainly could be held here for development meets and so forth. Yeah. Good action as we continue to look at William Nib versus Cedric Titus. Look at this moment now for Cedric Titus. Can they pull one back? Eccleston on the run. Still there. Orville oh, Brown did try to barge in. Eccleston still was firm footed. I love the accountability and camaraderie as well in the William Nib team. Forrester immediately taking the blame for his error and absolving his teammates. Here's the delivery. Headed away at the back post by Fish. Good save that made by Phillips. He was alert to the danger of that low delivered to the near post from the corner. Concedes another one. Once more, that one over the top. Khalil Campbell making way for William Nip for O'Neill Harton. Brown trying to release Bernard. Cut out well. Here's Walker on the ball. Enriquez.
Here's Brown. Can't shoot from distance. Gets it on the left. Gets the shot off as well. Still dangerously poised is William Nib. Can they Oh, off the upright? I was about to say, can he get the shot off? But didn't he, did he get it get it off? Yeah, it always seemed as if he was poised to finish there, Sir and Williams. Gainer with a spill after the initial shot was deflected, not gathered well. Had options in the middle as well, but took it on, rightfully so. That was a big chance for William Nip to go 4 0 up in this game. Big result, or big, not a result, but update. Central leading Clarendon College, a goal to nil. That in the second half as well. I would like to say that's a surprise, but after seeing both teams so far this season in the Dacosta Cup, I'm not quite sure it He's is. It's a great opportunity. Good work from Phillips to come forward and avert the danger. He's definitely been plugged in. Come on, Phillips. William Nib, they've stifled Cedric Titus. Perfect example just now. Easy does it for Brown. That's the substitute, Houghton. You see the youth on his frame. Here's Saren Williams. Lays it for Henriquez. Has options to his left. Gets it to Bernard. He was offside, though. Yeah, miscued the shot regardless. The man who supplied him has had a really good game as well. Karan Enriquez. Has had, added some real spark to that attacking midfield area for William Nib. That's their third offside of the contest. Download the Sportsmax app today. Get it on the Google Play or the Apple App Store. And watch so much action. Football, cricket, and so many other sporting disciplines. WTA tennis as well. Downloads are free. Get the Sportsmax app. Good work from Walker. Eccleston was trying to build Forrester. Marcus Forrester being so calm. Here's one of the scorers, Brown. Turns his man inside out. Wilson. Back to Brown. Sees the street for them now. It's really been a good Saturday afternoon game of football. Minto has the duties to clear. Bernard was alert and foiled that. Good movement. Cedric Titus trying to turn on the styles themselves. Animated as ever, Dwight Jeremiah, coach of William Nip.
Thorpe goes from distance. Come on, Phillips. Calm as per usual. Old Harbour leading. Garvey Masia, three goals to two. Bernard on the end of this delivery. This is James Brown, back to James. What a first time attempt that from O'Neill Houghton. I thought there was a hint of offside, but clearly not. Great ball in as well. And you know, it must be said in the first half, as I, as I mentioned earlier, Jaheim Brown was running things, but I, I, I beg your pardon, Joshua Walker was running things. But in the second, a lot of license has been given to Jaheim Brown, and he has looked absolutely fantastic as well, also on the score sheet. So maybe I was a bit. Hasty in your yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure you were. I, I still would give it to Joshua Walker, but the sports match that moment and what other moment could it have been? The second goal from Jaheim Brown. Oh what a strike it was. That was a strike of beauty. The sports match that moment brought to you by the sports match app. Get it on the Google Play or the App Lab Store. And follow the action in it's a schoolboy football. SSFL in Trinidad and Tobago. So much content on the Sportsmax app. You do yourself a disservice not to have it. Horton. Certainly a shock result we've seen so far. Well, two of them, three of them actually. Not seen an update on the Dintel McGraw game. Last score we heard was McGraw leading by a goal to nil. Central leading Clarendon College by one goal as well. One nil. And Old Harbour leading Gava Masia 3-2. That's what we've heard so far. Of course, as the results come in, we share them with you. In the Manning Cup, KC 4 0 over Campion College, Fortis versus Fortes. Speaking of shock results, isn't it a shock? <laughs> the writers will have a lot to do tonight to cover that one. Here's William Nib. Perhaps not a shot for Dwight Jeremiah. Cedric Titus making a change and Let's just say young Raj Rajani Thomas looks a, a little bit young. Only a little. If he's in grade 8, I'm still in university. <laughs> that would be quite something. That one was given away. Here's Henriquez. It was tame, wasn't it? 
probably the only aspect of his play that needs a bit of touching up his finishing some of his shots lack that punch and decisiveness that his killer passes do Bernard to Henriquez Here's Bernard. Both of the candidates for the play of the match having attempts on that particular instant, instance. First it was Joshua Walker, then it was Jaheim Brown. Perhaps any of them who score another goal we just tilt it in their favor. The discussions are ongoing. Good work. From Jaquan James there. Yellow card shown to Jaheim Brown there. Time wasting the statement made by the referee. Here's Jaheim Brown. Gets by Thomas, the diminutive player who came on. Here's Walker. Minto. Intercepted well by Brown. Enriquez does have the tendency to go back before he produces a pass forward. Saren Williams trying to continue being a menace. Change made by William Nib. And here's a bit of proof that the average age of the squad is actually 14 and a half. Junior Gray certainly looks junior. Oh, Strike right. and target immediately. What a way to introduce yourself. Yeah, I believe Junior Gray is 12 or 13 years old. Two substitutes involved in that play. Number 17 as well. Kenil Mott. Here's another chance. Houghton. Almost there. Good turn from Eccleston. Here's Gray. Wilson gets the return ball. Oh, what an audacious strike that.
good win by William Nib. Here's Owen Thorpe now for Cedric Titus. Eccleston. Can he bring one back? Frustration mounts. As we've reached the end of the 90, only three additional minutes. That pass into the pivots have, has been on all game for William Nib. Here's an opportunity. Corner kick. Enrique is there. Stepping across to do the duties. Sent in the area. Mort was waiting, but falls to Walker, trying to get the shot off. How do we split the tile, Jay? Walker versus Brown. Yeah, I think, I think I'm leaning towards Walker just. But not, not to take away from Brown. Here's Brown. Can he change the narrative? Still has the ball. Gets it back. Cleared now by Cedric Titus. I think it was just a change in role for Walker, mainly. A choice to drop him a bit deeper in the second half. Maybe to deal with the transitional threat of Cedric Titus, which they haven't had in the second half whatsoever, as opposed to the couple of dangerous moments that they had in the first. So I think that just goes to show the versatility of the player as well yeah one of my thoughts especially is that his defensive force would have been utilized in a deeper role especially because Forrester was on card trouble as well so they didn't want to put any more pressure on them on him especially so yeah I definitely wouldn't hold the less than stellar offensive output in the second half against him as you mentioned so yeah play of the match Junior Gray Horton Kimmy Moat there being bodied up by Gray. Got a shot off. Audacious little youngster. The whipper snapper. That's it. That's the end of the match. Emphatic. A statement victory by a stellar midfield. A stellar defense. A stellar attack. A stellar team in the form of William Neighbor. The derby goes their way. This time around, they'll have a return fixture this season. But they've been really imperious in their performance. Two players who could have been player of the match easily. And a wonder strike from this one. Jaheim Brown. He was in the conversation with the opening goal scorer. Joshua Walker certainly got the nod. A big performance in a big venue literally and figuratively the Trelawney multi-purpose complex and they go to the gallery and applaud their home fans William Nib, 3-0 winners over Cedric Titus the derby is decided at least the first leg of it it was good that we were here They love what they saw, and to be quite frank, so did I.
Confirmation of the full time score William Nip 3, Cedric Titus nil. Full match highlights in this one Zone D of the Dacosta Cup. Brown troubling the keeper. Gainer early in the encounter had another strike towards goal. Kept him honest, kept him earnest. Here, this one went across. Saron Williams played it for Henriquez, who had a weak attempt. Had another bite of the cherry, but again, blocked and Thorpe with the clearance. Great opportunity from that free kick. Taron Eccleston won the free kick, also did the duties. And here's another great opportunity. Watson playing him through. First time shot wide of the mark. Come on, Phillips perhaps would have been beaten. William Nib, though, turned it at this moment. Enriquez, what a pass to the engine. Joshua Walker into the promised land. They continued to prove a threat. And this one sent across. Prince Bernard, though, did not get it on target. Second half action now. Look at the strike. Oh, my. Oh, my. Show it again. And perhaps you could show it again and again and again. What a strike. He was forlorn at the moment. 2-0. And then it would even get worse. In the area. Henriquez with the back heel attempt. Walker tried, but it fell nicely to Saren Williams, the number nine, who was always dangerous all afternoon. And he cut the shot off. And it was... Final rights, red to Cedric Titus in zone D. More attempts would come. Brown. It fell nicely for Williams once more, but it was off the upright. Oh my, so very close. And a statement victory in the Trelawney Derby. Here's the full-time stats. 10 on target from 22 attempts. William Nib, they really out. A shun Cedric Light Titus in that statistic. They had four attempts, none on target. 15 fouls, eight for Cedric Titus, two yellow cards apiece. Offsides, William Nib leading that statistic three to nil. Six four corners in favor of William Nib. 61% of the possession. Their press was impressive. Three goals and a statement victory. They go atop the table. William Nib ahead of Cedric Titus. Gerard is standing by with the play of the match. Yeah, here with the man of the match, Joshua Walker, the number eight for William Nib, hold on to that trophy. And uh, yeah, just tell me about your game. Uh, talk to me about the goal, though. How do you feel about it? You know, calm and composed in the final third. Yeah, uh, tell me about your performance, especially defensively. Uh, what was going through your mind? Wait, what was the mission like coming in for you, the tactics that you wanted to use in this game? All right, so the mission is to look where they're trying to go. Yeah, I, I, do you think you executed as to the best of your ability as you can? Yes, but there's room for improvement. As there always is. Well, congratulations to you, Joshua, and uh, good job today. Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, Joshua Walker there, the man of the match, player of the match, and uh, the sports max player of the match. And yes, coach now for Cedric Titus, coach Wade Cameron, uh, Wade Crawford, my apologies, coach Another result that you would have wanted, especially this being one that has been in your favor historically. Uh, just tell me, though, how you feel. How would you assess the entire game? Well, my assessment of the game, yeah, I think we, we, we came out slow. We started the game slow, and I think the game got away from us, I think, midway through the first half. Yeah, a lot of people, though, would have been shocked by the results coming into this one for your team because they thought uh, the team has been playing well. When you look at how the season has gone so far, what are some of the mistakes do you think are causing new victories? Well, I think it, it, it was down to inexperience. I think we have a very inexperienced team, and the youngsters are there just learning the game, right? We are not as deep as we were last year. So we have some first time for, for, for the season. So we, we definitely will be getting better. Yeah. What are you going to look at improving on for the next game? Well, I think we need to improve on our finishing. I think we didn't do well in the, in the offensive zone. And I think we need to work a little harder on that. But other than that, I think, I mean, it's work in progress. So we'll, we'll keep working. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Oh, and hard luck today. Yeah, Coach Wade Crawford there from the Central Titus team. Now, time to talk to the man, Dwight Jeremiah. You would hear him usually on 
or analytical <laughs> team. On the other but, side, uh, right. <laughs> but no, he's in his coaching uh, capacity. Coach, talk to me about your team's performance. A uh, very young team you have, but they showed a lot of experience out there, a lot of maturity out on the field. Yeah, the average age of the team is 14.5. That's just startling to think about it. But I think we learned from our last game. We played Discovery Bay, and Discovery Bay is a team everybody expected us to give 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, but I told them they came, they sat deep, but we just learned from it. We had to be more creative. Um, the first goal epitomized what we did in training after Discovery Bay. We wanted all five vertical zones to be occupied when we attack. We had that, and that's how we could get the link up play. But the commitment today that the boys show is above everything else that we did, um, and that I think contributed to the clean sheet. Yeah, tell me about your midfield. Uh, very impressive by those three youngsters in, in the midfield. Commanded the game. Let's tell me a little bit more about them. Well, you know, Corn Enriquez is a name you'd remember. He scored 11 goals for us last year. He played as a, as a number nine. We played him as a 10 now based on what we have. And the, goal, the, the, the number nine is our second string goalkeeper that we've converted to a striker. Um, but himself and Jaheim Brown, I think he's just hugely technical, the number seven. Um, the number eight that got man of the match, Joshua Walker, um, played him at right back last season. But I just think his work rate is immense. And I'm just teaching him to understand positional play in the middle of the park. And if there's a sponge, he's one of them because he soaks up everything. I know you're one of the people who would have lobbied very hard for Trelawney to, well, this uh, multi-purpose stadium to host school by football matches. You're finally here. <laughs> and uh, how are you feeling about that? Gerard, it's immense. I mean, to just look at the stands, to see the atmosphere and just, just the persons who are away from here, not necessarily Kingston, but to think this is in a bush. It's broken down. It's not good. Um, I was on a mission as the vice president of Chulani Football Association. I brought the Major League final here for the first time. It was massive. So immediately after the game, I sent the clips to Issa and I said, look at this and tell me you can't play here. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, okay, we'll try you with a first round game. And we did that. So this is the first round game. So we're saying, when you look at this, talk to me about second round quarterfinals. This is a beautiful venue. And I think the world needs to see that and it needs to be utilized more. Yeah, I hope we do see more usage of this uh, multi-purpose stadium. Thank you so much, Coach Jeremiah. And congratulations <laughs> to you and your team. All the best, yeah. Yeah, lots to consider from that statement by Dwight Jeremiah. But here's the Zone D updated standings after the completion of this match day. William Nib on top of the table, 12 points. Goal difference, plus 12. Spot Valley with four wins as well, plus nine. Cedric Titus in third, six points. And they have two losses and two wins. Still rooted at the bottom, Mouchette and Holland. And Discovery Bay with... Uh, a one win there, three points. All right. SSFL on scene TV. Malik Secondary versus Trinity Colleges. Wednesday, 2.15, 3.15. In the Eastern Caribbean. The Costa Cup and Sports Match 2. Port Antonio versus Titchfield. That's the Portland Derby. The Port Antonio Derby, you could say. That's a big one. Saturday. 3.20 p.m., 4.20 in the Eastern Caribbean. Another beautiful venue, Carter Park. Yeah, can't wait for that. Confirmation of the full-time score. William Nib 3, Cedric Titus nil. A statement victory at a wonderful venue. Would love to be back here for schoolboy football and others. Look at that. That's how we wrap it up here from the Trelawney Multipurpose Complex. See you again.